Salutations, this is Mario Fios here on the Miracle Mile Podcast. Today, we are having some technical difficulties. So, as opposed to using our microphone systems, we're going to be using an iPhone microphone. <laughs> Forgive the low budget, but I'm the low budget artist, so I guess we gotta go with the name. <laughs> Anyways, introducing here, we've got Domenica. Hi. And we've got Kevin. Hello. So, uh, I put both these two together because we're all artists here, and we have in our gallery working under Kevin's guise. And Dominica has a few things under her own work project as well. Who'd like to start? You want to start? <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right, Kevin. What we got up? going here? So you got the art gallery really? going on. And you're yeah. starting off on this Sunday, which is literally tomorrow for us, right? Yeah. Tomorrow we have our um, art gallery at Cafe Maria in New okay. City um, that I've been helping to curate. Word, word. Um, it's, a bunch, it's like six artists, local okay. artists from Union City or Hudson County that are showing. That's like, right. um the theme is Amor. Amor, um, right. Love, for right. Valentine's. Yeah. Nice. Valid. And we have one here in the storefront and one in Cafe Maria, correct? The yes. extension? Yeah. So it's going to be from 9 to 4 p.m. 9 to 4 um, p.m. Cool. The art show tomorrow. And then 2 to 3.30 is our reception where our artists are going to come and like mingle or whatever. Yeah, valid. Um, And then we have the show here at the storefront at 6. Or That's 7. good. Okay, yeah. cool, cool. Um, So essentially... You're you're going to be focusing on those things, and are you going to be uh, presently available for all the days, or what specific days will you be presently available? Uh, I think I'm just there tomorrow and mm-hmm. next weekend. Okay, cool. Yeah. So you're going to be the start and the finish. Fantastic. Because yeah. I, I yeah, know we're all hacky sacking responsibility in that regard. Yeah. Uh, personally, I know I'm going to be there uh, Wednesday. Uh, I was going to be there Tuesday, but I have another podcast to record. So, <laughs> yeah, valid. Um, essentially, around it. <laughs> essentially, I hope it goes on well. Anyways, so um, that being said, um, we could uh, definitely go into depth on that later on. But I'm going to give you a little bit of spotlight, Dominica. Can you please explain to us who you are, what your creations mm-hmm. are about, what you focus on, medias you work, and um, your, your, your uh, what's it called? Your mediums, yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> um, okay, well, my name is Dominica, as you guys already know. And I am a multimedia artist, meaning I work with different uh, materials, uh, substances, sources, and um, basically I do all types of things, really. Mm -hmm. I've done things from like ceramics to like wood filing to like bookmaking to even blacksmithing. That's nice. Yeah, thank you. Um, So yeah, I do all types of work and, you know, I just do uh, anything that I could fully... uh, put myself into and express myself with okay yeah and where does your experience come from are you uh, are you self-taught or are you inspired by other people you go to schooling for that where do you get all these okay. crafts and traits from mm-hmm. so i'm definitely self-taught but i feel nice. like it also helps being born in a family where both parents are like creative oh nice nice yeah yeah um i mean of course they have their own jobs so that, you know like i've seen them draw and i've seen them do stuff that you know definitely like it's like, hmm, not all parents could do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so it, it helped you get yeah, a yeah. firm ground in the art world. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, you know, that seeing all of that, like, in my household has definitely, like, inspired me a lot uh, in dealing with my own craft. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I feel like I never, I never really took a class for art, anything of the sort, except, like, once when I was, like, in high school, in mm. my senior year, I took yeah, my first like... art class because I had to take, like, something. Some kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, but really, I, so I really it's, excelled. It's mostly, like, raw intuition then. Yeah, that I really yeah. excelled in that. I was put in, like, the Nationals Art Society nice. uh, my first year in, like, an art class specifically. Cool. And then I was given, mm. like, a scholarship to go to um, North Carolina and basically do a craft of my choice for free. That's nice. Yeah. Um, and they gave me like a stipend. I was being paid to be there. So oh, that's yes. where I did blacksmithing. I was doing blacksmithing up in the mountains. So oh, yeah. Uh, I want to I <laughs> yeah. talk more on that in a bit. But um, before we go in there, I also wanted to know like where, where you got your craft from. Like yeah. where, what's your oh, mediums? Yeah. And then also like if yeah. you have like an origin story or if you just picked up a pencil um, or paint. Or brush yeah, basically the same thing. I took my, my first art class senior year. I took a paint painting class and I was like okay this this, this be hitting this be hitting yeah this works. This works. <laughs> like, I was like this is it <laughs> yeah. so um and I just I wasn't even like interested in art that much back then so mm. I was like doing human services and, mm. like I wanted to be a chef at one point. Like, I've just been, like, throwing <laughs> that, shit I mean, that's around. an art. Like, yeah. 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 Like, art, yeah. Yeah, and then I burnt the chicken, and it just did not work. Uh, <laughs> you're like, never mind. Chicken. This is not okay, for this me. A, this is my craft. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'll stick to the paintbrush. Okay, fine. Um, but yeah, and then I switched. I went to Hudson Community College, mm-hmm. and I did computer arts slash fine arts there. 
So I took a few art classes there, but it wasn't like what I wanted to do, honestly. Mm -hmm. Computer Mm -hmm. arts, like I mentioned earlier, I'm terrible (laughs) (laughs) at graphics and stuff. I tried it, yeah. I was like, Mm -hmm. let me go where the money's at. But like, I really, it wasn't for me. (laughs) I I personally, um, I'm similar in in regards where I didn't like have, I didn't go to school for anything like that. Mm -hmm. I just kind of like picked up a pencil really early on, like as Mm -hmm. a child and just kept doing it. Eventually I was like, you know what? Uh, My parents are right. It's hard to make money here so i'm gonna focus on other things <laughs> i i draw from my own self-disciplines like i i really care about art but i don't um i don't incentivize it as like my means to make money i'm more so like well in the future invest upon it once i like the like fruits of my labor afford it so that i can afford things better so uh, personally i'm similarly that uh, i wasn't like i wasn't like like trained in like a schooling or for it it's just kind of a something i've done naturally um, I went to Rutgers. I went to Rutgers for psychology. People told me that I should try art therapy, but I don't know. I, I just never wanted to combine the two personally. I, I yeah. want I want to be like a, a therapist down the line, but I don't want to like I don't want to I don't want to involve art because I'm very afraid of one day just like focusing on art so much fiscally that it's like just dies down for me. That's just personally my no, relationship. I understand. Yeah. I guess some people can mm-hmm. do it, you know, and some people can not like not get tired of it. Like you you can just, you know, make designer tees, you can like, you know, make paintings and flip yeah. them, you know. But personally I feel like I would at some point be like I have a deadline to reach. Fuck. Like, yeah. I just never wanted to get to that point. But it's nothing wrong. And I respect anyone right. who can do it like that. Yeah. I think it's interesting what you said about like art being like a like a difficult way to like bring in money. Mm-hmm. I feel like every artist could definitely relate to that. Yeah. It, you know, it, it is a tough industry, you know, but you know, it's what the passion that keeps you going. Like, you know, yeah. what? like it's not all about the money, but yeah. you know, eventually right. people do get lucky and they make really great profit. And yeah. you know, it's always about chasing that, mm-hmm. but yeah, you know, to each their own, like, you know, it, it takes a lot sometimes. Yeah. You know? the, the way, the way I see it is, um, the art industry especially if you look like where the millions and billions are being made a lot of it is like knowing the right persons like yeah, making the right connections know, networking yeah, it's always about like who you know and yeah you know and where you go and like yeah. how well you can even invest in that so i i personally it's not that it discouraged me from being in the art world it just kind of like made it clear to me that it wasn't just about the art i once um met someone who had like a studio um a a a former friend of mine uh, showed me uh, their neighbor's studio, and it was this man who was making like twenty foot statues, like twenty sculptures, foot yeah, sculptures, yeah, yeah, like these giant things. Like you, like it was like a like the studio's roof was at least forty feet, like it was yeah. high. Wow. He had a second floor, like made out of a staircase he had, and he had like a bunch of like sculptures and stuff like that, like made out of marble and like different kinds of materials. Oh, that's gorgeous. And it was it was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. And I I, t- I put him aside and I asked him, and I was like how many of these do you sell? And he was like, like a, about a month or so. He's like, one or two. I was like... And I mean, it, that's the reality. Yeah, and it's crazy because like there's someone out there right now in the modern art world who like paints a canvas blue. Like, oh and gets millions for it and you know like like it, <laughs> it, it, no no i mean good for them no oh good for God. them by all regards good for them it just it just that moment like when i saw that man there like in a hidden little part of union city just making giant sculptures and yeah. not being recognized to it kind of like brought me to the realization that like the success you can make in art has nothing to do with the actual talent level it's how well you can like like retail or like market art. yeah you how know, well you can market yeah. i kind of even though you said no shame i kind of agree with you about like just painting something blue you know that's not wrong i mean the art is not. art is universal definitely not but like you know when you do make that comparison about someone you could see that puts a lot of details and like work into it and then compare it to like a line you know it's like yo that's insane i don't even yeah. think it's wrong i just think it, it's not a it's, it's it's just talent is not the equivalent exchange for monetization's value and that's the that's the clear indicator and i guess that's personally why i didn't want to mix money with art because i feel like like if i at some point found out what my worth was societally speaking i feel like it would either piss me off it would break me or it would just like discourage me i mean that's personally my thing some people have it as a hobby others have it as a living Uh, i just call it i just call it a discipline and keep it behind closed doors and every now and then do something with it but i don't like ever want to like make it my main front of finances but to each their own of course um anyway i want to get back on the blacksmithing thing okay like 
I know nothing about blacksmithing. Yeah, like my yeah, rendition of black, yeah, my like, rendition of blacksmithing is like Skyrim and like just like making a fucking sword. So can you yeah. please <laughs> elaborate like some little bit detail about the process you go by? Because that sounds so interesting. Yeah, sure. Um, okay, well, just like you, I didn't know anything either. Mm-hmm. But I had um, a great mentor. His name is uh, Seth Gold. Nice. You can find him on Instagram. He's very uh, popular in the blacksmithing. Do you, you know his handle by any chance? Yeah. It, I, I believe it's his name. Seth Gold? Yeah. All right. yeah. Shout out Seth, Seth Gold. Gold. That's <laughs> Seth Gold. All right. Continue. Yeah, he's, uh, he's he's pretty valid in the in the whole community and whatnot. Um, he definitely walked me through it. Um, but yeah, there's, you know, you got to have your gloves. Um, funny experience, actually, that I had in uh, my first day, uh, you know, blacksmithing, working with iron, was that, you know, obviously you heat up your, your piece of metal. Um, but first, you got to start uh, a fire. Basically, mm-hmm. so you get like, uh, you crunch up like a newspaper and you set it on fire. You throw it in like, kind of like a, not like a, like a, kind of like a bin. A bin. Let's okay. call it a bin. And then you put a coal, a coal on top of it, and there's like a leather that like you gotta like pull down that releases air, and that I guess you know chemistry starts happening where like the coal catches on fire, uh, dealing with like uh, the wind that's going through, mm. and it you know it starts like it has a steady fire going. That's okay. where you uh, place your uh, smeltable your, ore or whatnot. Your your metal, your iron. You yeah. can literally me- melt any iron. Mm. You know. Like, there's not a specific iron you can't melt. You know, at a certain degree, every uh, piece of iron melts. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So then you place it, you take it out, and then, uh, I forgot what it was called, uh, vice, vial, one of those. Okay. So you, uh, you place the metal on the, on the, on the it, vial. Is it, is it something that, like, grips it? Like, is it something that grips it, or is it something that, like, like contains it? Like, no, no, no. So there's like a placement? Yeah, it's a oh, placement. Okay, okay. Um, of course, dealing with, like, gripping, um, there are like uh, like utensils you use to like carry the iron okay. from the from the fire over to like like where forceps you place kinda it. yeah okay. yeah and then like once you can't you could only hit it when when it's like bright red if it mm. starts getting uh, like a dark red you, it's better to like not hit it because if not because uh, if you don't then overall like when you're done with everything the probability of the iron breaking in half is like major so mm. like. Like I said, funny story. Um, I was like, Seth, like, what do I do? Like, it's hot. Where do I hit it? He goes, Oh, <laughs> hit it right there. And once you hit it there, it's gonna bend. He goes, Like, hit it hard. So then I was like, Shit, okay. So boop, nothing moves. <laughs> it was just like the same thing. I was like, Wow, this is embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, and he was like, You gotta hit it harder. But, you know, start as a start, man. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Uh, it got to the point where um, I was hitting it. You know, because obviously you got to fail a couple times before you get better. Yeah, it happens to anything. Yeah, uh, it got to the point where I, was, I wasn't I was hitting it hard enough that uh, my hands started to, like, swell. And I was getting, uh, like, blisters all over my hands. I had to wear mm. gloves. Like, I had, like, my first day, um, my first week, actually, I had, like, a whole bunch of bandages on my hand mm. because of how badly I hurt myself. But, yeah, it's uh, definitely a craft. You really should get mentored by you can't just yeah you walk can't just walk it. you can't yeah. you'll burn the crap out of yourself yeah, waste you, material like, if you don't know what the fuck you're probably doing probably set a flyer yeah like, <laughs> yeah pretty much if you don't know what you're doing then forget yeah, about it get out of there yeah, yeah. wow well honestly that's a very insightful experience a very unique experience especially in hudson county specifically um I wanted to uh, address one thing, and um, the the podcast is named The Miracle Mile. I don't know if you guys know why it's called The Miracle Mile, but it's because... Because you guys make miracles? Well, no, it's not about <laughs> us. I swear to God, it's not about us. Um, the Miracle Mile is the nickname that uh, Bergenland used to have in really? the, the 70s and 80s. Oh, so essentially, we we here at Reach, what we try to do is uh, we're trying to bring some kind of fire back. I don't know if you've ever seen pictures or videos of Bergenland, but back in the day, Bergenland was a very, uh, f- very, like, prosperous ferris place it had like a lot of opportunities there they have like concerts they had like like block parties and stuff like that yeah. and the idea the idea is that bergen line was like actually very very an enjoyable experience and not only that um was very profitable it was a very big market um so here at reach the idea and the reason we go by the miracle model is because we're trying to establish some sort of return to appreciation for our community and when we start on that the reason we have this podcast besides giving you all our you know your platform to speak what you speak is also to uh you know bring into light how much or how little if you reject your society that's valid um your community affected you 
if you guys have been in Hudson County for more than a year, I'm sure you guys have had to use a Bergen Line bus. I'm sure you guys have been to the parks. Um, do you guys have any insight into something that Bergen Line or Hudson County in general has done for you guys? How it shaped you or something that it did for you? Even if it just meant going to high school here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I was born and raised like mm -hmm. like a block away from Bergen Line. So yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm used to like taking the buses down Bergen Line. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I'm like, I live there. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, would uh, either of you say that maybe like your artistries or maybe like your focuses have incentivized your personal creations as is? Or do you guys consider yourselves independent from your society? How do you guys go about it? Um, well, the way I do my work is that I'm definitely inspired by different things. I recently did like a 3D model of like um, like uh, Asian culture. Okay. So like there's definitely a point where I want to like um, extend that over to like the community here. Okay. So uh, I feel like it's definitely great to be around like an area that's so like uh, diverse. Yeah. You, know, you can literally walk down and eat Peruvian food, Colombian food, Dominican yeah. food, all types of fucking food. You know, like they it's... don't have that just anywhere. No, you don't. You can literally I've, I've, I've been traveling a little more recently. And um, although I'm not saying like across the country, like that. I literally just mean like New York, maybe mm -hmm. some parts of like the middle of new jersey sometimes south and um anytime i'm like stuck somewhere and i need some kind of service and like, let's say like uh i don't know i need some slippers or something for example like it's just so much different to like move anywhere else yeah. like if you need something you gotta like pull up somewhere specifically get on the highway drive yeah. out there for 15 20 minutes and then get somewhere and then go to a strip mall you know mm -hmm. like here you, you literally just walk a couple blocks up and you can do just about anything like yeah it's I, very I, I used to live in new brunswick um because I, I came from Rutgers. i was there um four to five years um and i had a blast out there a great place don't get me wrong i literally left this area because i didn't want to be here anymore but um one of the small little realizations that made me realize that i definitely prefer being here was uh once uh my dog um i have a dog her name is pixie mm -hmm. and um my dog she uh she needed food and I, I didn't have any on me at the time so i was like okay let me just go run over to a local pet shop i google it i'm like local pet stores near me and it says east brunswick 40 minute walk highway accessible it's like i'm on foot dog like <laughs> how is there no pet store in new brunswick yeah. Like, yeah. like it's, it's like that like in some places like if you need some kind of service a specific service you can't go by foot on there yeah. there's so many places in this country alone that you can't just walk to the thing yeah and i feel like although it's based on how overpopulated and how packed we are as a minority environment i think it's very resourceful very efficient and very very convenient I don't know. I personally, I, I'm one of those people that took this place for granted, like a yeah. lot. Yeah, like, I was, just about to say I was that. trying to get the <laughs> fuck out of here. I feel like a lot of people who necessarily haven't left Union City, like, and gone other places, they don't realize how lucky we are to have everything yeah. so yeah. accessible to us. Yeah, so. there's there's sure. a there's a very mainstream meme, not even just about North Hudson or Hudson County, where a lot of people uh, who like leave New Jersey and then go elsewhere. The meme is that there you'll always catch New Jerseyans saying man i miss new jersey <laughs> and i think it's ironic because like it's very easy to just talk down jersey especially because we're right in front of new york and all yeah. that we got yeah. slander from new york like, oh you're yeah. trying to be like new york yeah. old fucking old, old, old <laughs> like, fucking news yeah um, wasn't there something in the news that said that uh the most the, hated yeah most, most hated, hated country but we're also the most happy uh, uh most i'm sorry i said, I said yeah, yeah i said county i mean i'm in county and state but point is um yeah. there's also a statistic that shows that we're also the most uh content and happy state so, really? Yeah, we are. That's kind of creepy. We are. We That's are. Scary, I mean, actually. you also have to realize like, that there's a there's a lot of <laughs> there's also a lot of suburban areas out here, and it's not just Hudson County, yeah, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, the idea is that um, uh, I feel like w we're pretty self sufficient. I feel like people don't like how smug we are because of that. Um, but regardless, uh, that's not the point. I, I wanted to focus on one reason behind that. And my reason behind that is um, it's something that our CEO Terry brought up once, and it like really blew my mind because. Um, when I first started working with Reach, uh, I was always on the side of like, yeah, yeah, I love supporting local businesses. Yeah, I love supporting local artists, but I'm trying to get the fuck out of here. That's what I used to think like immediately. Like at some point, I'm gonna get the hell out of here. Um, and one day we were walking on uh, on Bergen Line and we got to 30th and 31st. Um, you know, there's like that big sign that says Art UC. It's like, it's literally in between yeah, 30th and 31st. Yeah. That's where like buses pass by. Probably, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's, all, it's pretty new, actually. I yeah, think yeah. It's all like in... 2017. Mm -hmm. So if you if you at some point I don't know later on today or some other time um if you go to like Bergen Line and 31st and 30th in between it's like where like the the highways kind of intersect. Oh, is it where the city in the middle? Yeah, around oh, okay. there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So so if you go there, 
and you look like off the the bridge where you can see highways just zooming past yeah. those are nicknamed the veins and oh, the reason wow. is because like you know you can say new york is the core of everything you can say it's the best city in the world and all that but if something happens to those veins new york is fucked mm-hmm. about two or three years ago i remember there was a situation where there's this fat ass traffic jam i think like two trucks collided into each other in the lincoln tunnel mm-hmm. and then a bunch of cars crashed into it as well and That's it right. stayed stopped for like four to seven hours okay. do you know what happened to new york new york paused new york took a whole yeah. fucking break like it was just stopped entirely and people that were working in new york coming to new jersey and people that are working in new jersey coming to new york and they were, even like connecticut they were doomed. Philadelphia, yeah, they yeah. were doomed and and it was it was one of those moments where like if something happens to those highways that are in new jersey everything goes down and it's like it's one of those situations where like again things are taken for granted until things collide or crash until things happen. yeah so i personally see new jersey as this place that has a lot of prosperity and a lot of promise or not the main characters because it's new york you know it has a giant beautiful skyline but personally after being there so often i kind of like looking at it from afar i kind of don't <laughs> like the, the smoke pollution yeah. <laughs> i think it's really noisy i, it's really I love new york and at some point i do actually want to live out there but i'm not in any way should perform discontent about my environment is what i'm saying i agree yeah i feel like we live you know, this is why we get so much haze because we feel like we live in New York, but we're not actually there. But bro. like, dude, we're like ten minutes away. I, I, I feel know. like we get all the perks yeah. of it anyway. I mean, like, yeah, bro, it's like right there. You just uh, get on a bus in fifteen were, minutes. Uh, I heard some guy from New York, New York say while he was buying like a bacon, egg, and cheese mm-hmm. in New York that uh, New Jersey was like basically another Williamsburg. So, yeah, yeah. It's, it's I've like heard that as well. Tomorrow, I've heard that as well. Know? I've also heard people say that um that. They consider our area more New York than Brooklyn, which I'm, I'm, I'm oh, never, I'm never, I'm no, never, I've never, I've never agreed. I've never, I've never agreed. I'm just saying I've heard that. I've heard that. And I'm like, I don't know, bro. I, that's I, debatable. Yeah, I yeah. Some people, some people just don't fuck with Brooklyn. Some people just don't fuck with Bronx. I mean, I, I personally, I, that's not my opinion at all. Someone from Harlem I, had like something against people from someone, Brooklyn. Someone got her, like, I don't know. New Jersey. <laughs> They're all like, <laughs> we're better than you. I don't know, bro. I got an engine cap on. That's all I fucking know yeah. i want the Rutgers. <laughs> i'm good on new jersey for now you're new jersey yes. honestly <laughs> honest, at first i really was rejecting it so hard um and then honestly the, the moment that i really like started appreciating it was um slowly getting into working with reach um of course my time at Rutgers made it more enjoyable but um the moment that i was like no that's it this place res- deserves my respect was how I'm not going to say how, like, perfectly or how fantastically we dealt with COVID, but we dealt with COVID better than a lot of other states. Yeah, we did. A lot of other states. Um, And I feel like, um, like, I'm not on on all agreeable terms with Murphy on everything he stands by, but I do respect how well he established things in the regards of uh, safety and efficacy by the CDC guidelines. So I feel like when everything was going to shit with Georgia having drag races and shit and, like, literally, like, doing the dumbest things on earth in Florida... Fucking yeah. God, Florida. <laughs> Florida needs to, like, they, we need yeah. to move Florida um, out of the California. U.S. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, it's like when I saw all those things happen, and and although I can't even blame New York because it's like a whole other ballpark, New Jersey, I feel, handled it very well. And uh, yeah. when everything yeah. was, like, at the peak of, like, the first, like, fright, which was, like, March to, like, May, that yeah. area. I think we were doing great. Yeah, I remember, I remember being in my house, or I remember, like, I remember just being indoors and being, like, I'm the thing so is, glad I'm in Jersey right now. We were, like, we were taking it seriously. That was the that was that's the only thing really because every other state it just seemed like they were doing whatever the hell they wanted. Yeah. To be honest, I don't know. I mean, personally, I feel like um, regardless of where you're at, you're always gonna have people who uh, belittle the opinion of uh, taking things seriously. You're gonna have people who think that things are hoaxes and conspiracies. Oh, yeah. You're gonna have people that are uh, conspiracy theorists about the vaccination stuff. And I mean. To each their own. I feel like the government we have is so untrustworthy that I don't even blame anybody for being defensive on anything they un- impose on us. I just think we all have old family members. We all have friends with asthma and diseases. So, like, if you got to wear a fucking mask, just yeah. put that shit on. Yeah. Just put that shit on. Personally, the closest people in my life, like my parents, they're old as hell. And my roommate, he has immunodeficiencies. So, it's like... I, I'm not allowed to go smoke a blunt with 10 people. I'm not going to go out to the bars and like, is that my water bottle? 
club like that can't yeah. move that way anymore. Besides the podcast, I just stay home. Yeah, it's, it's not like they're telling you to do anything crazy. It's just yeah. like little things that you could just like change. Yeah. It, it's just I think people um people fail to recognize how much psychologically people needed to be outside. Um, as an event coordinator, I was catching wind of that very very quickly before it, uh, the COVID outbreak happened. I remember I was um I was doing basement shows because I when I first started doing events, it was with basement shows in uh, New Brunswick. You guys know about the basement show scene by any chance? If you don't, it's fine. Is that like so. the meat locker? <laughs> no, I don't know what that is. But <laughs> oh, let me not. <laughs> no, okay. Anyway, so base uh, in um in. In Rutgers, New Brunswick, a few other areas out there as well, there's this thing called basement shows where people will have shows in their basements where they'll have like local bands, local rappers, oh, yeah, DJs perform. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> all right, valid. Okay. I just call that shows. Yeah. Like, yeah. You just show up to like well, they're, a sketchy they're, place. They're called like, basement oh, shows okay. because they're literally sketchy basements. Yeah. So, um, I um, I I started doing events like that. And uh, it was a great scene out there. Um, but I remember, like, at the end of the nights when everyone was really messed up and, like, really fucked up and things, they'd always, like, get us, put me aside and be like, yo, I'm so grateful that you do these things because, like, I, I don't know what I'd do without them. And, like, I, I used to think, yeah, whatever, you're just drunk, I appreciate it, blah, blah, blah. But once, like, COVID reached, like, the three to four mo- month mark, I really saw people, like, just itching to do something like really? like uh, like there would be like local bars and restaurants that after hours would have some ridiculous antics and shit like that people would just <laughs> record themselves do dumb things like especially down south um and i feel like it just speaks a lot to how much i feel like it's a human need to like socialize, yeah and i feel like you know? we we failed we failed to recognize how much of our sanity depends on it um but anyway uh, I want to ask you both a question. And the question essentially is, um, since we all, you know, went into a lockdown for a while and now we have to move more reservedly, um, how did that affect your crafts? Mm, sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, um, I feel like during quarantine, mm. it just, I just had like the worst anxiety the whole time, oh, which is something that I base my work on a lot. It's like fears and anxieties and stuff. But the thing is, I cannot work when I have anxiety. Oh, my condolences. So, basically, the whole quarantine, I was just... Uh, yeah. Uh, like, I'm sorry. Like, yeah, it's like, one of those type of things. Okay. But, like, going out and, like, going for a walk, at least. Like, yeah, something. Yes. Yeah. Just getting out of the house and getting some air is definitely... Yeah. That's nice. ...what we need to do yeah. <laughs> during times like that. How about that. you, Dominica? Um, so, after I came back from North Carolina, I actually took, like, a long pause in, like, a... Uh, the art world and mm. everything in it um yeah. it wasn't until covid hit that i was like yo i have nothing to do maybe i should get back <laughs> into it <laughs> you know so i definitely um i definitely enjoy art a lot but you know like in your case as well where it's like eh, i think i'm just gonna put it to the side for a mm-hmm. bit you know that's that's what i did for most of my life to be honest mm. and i never really uh took a huge value into it until COVID hit where I was like, damn, like this is very like therapeutic. And you know, this is without art, you know, like, like you said, you know, like humanity, like we really like rely on it, yeah. you know? And, you know, I, and I took that into account, like, uh, it, and it played a huge part in my life, like immensely. Mm. Um, you know, besides art, I also do like other things like writing. So like I, mm. I launched my website. Uh, it's in my uh, Instagram profile, like in my bio. What's the website called? Uh, it just has my name in it. Okay. And then it's just where I put like writings and stuff like mm-hmm. that. I actually had the opportunity to be uh, published in a book. Wow, nice. Yeah, but I missed the deadline. So forget Aww. that. Yeah. Yeah. Life is yeah. long. You can figure yeah. it out in the future. Yeah, anything. I mean, it is what it is. Um, And then it wasn't until, you know, I was like in my bed just like moping around not doing anything and just seeing like instagram videos of people doing like art with clay and then i was like yo this is pretty sick you know i'm gonna order some clay right (laughs) now and do something about that yeah yeah (laughs) and then you know it's just definitely uh amazing so covid actually put me back into Uh, like uh doing art and whatnot and just expressing myself through different Mm. art forms Mm. so um yeah definitely it's always nice being back Word, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, personally, the way it went for me when COVID first hit, I didn't pick up a goddamn pen. Like, I didn't do yeah. anything <laughs> at first. At first, the first, my first reaction was, okay, it's apocalypse mode. Make a bunch of money. <laughs> was the first thing I focused on. I was like, okay, money, money, money. Um, and then uh, once there was a point in my time in life where I, I uh, forced myself to just completely isolate, um, it was uh, basically like 
summer, mostly fall, I force myself to isolate. And when I force myself to just like not see any single person besides my roommate, I, I came upon the desire to, you know, express anything that needed to be expressed through art once again, which it, it was great because I hadn't done so in a long time. I, uh, I had a sketchbook. Um, I personally, as, as I showed you guys my sketchbook a few days ago, um, I work autobiographically. So like, I have like, I've had four sketchbooks since like 2016. Um, and all of those basically carry the like thoughts and like emotions and like concepts that I've drawn since like 2016. Um, but the third one I had, I lost it. Um, like, mm. like I just straight up lost it in a backpack full of everything I owned oh at one God. point. And like, I just was so reluctant to pick up a pen after that. Like, cause like, it was like, the, it was a lot of work. It That's wasn't, like it. it wasn't even the number of work. It, it was more like. Again, these were autobiographies to me. It so it's personal. like it was like if you if you like had like a collection of diaries and you lost your third one and then the fourth one like it's just incomplete yeah. now. So it, that concept just broke me a lot. I was just like, like how do I even pick up pick up from here? Like the last thing I was focusing on is gone and the last time I drew something before that book was like 2017. It's 2020. Like yeah. so it was like like it was just a big pause in my life and I didn't know how to move on forward with it. So um it took COVID and then it took a uh, absolute like solitude to finally be like let's just fucking just jump into it um and um now i'm uh, focusing on two illustration books i'm focusing on a uh, uh, 31 drawings of darkness and 31 drawings of light which is very great by yeah. the way yeah thank yeah. you so yeah. much thank you so it's much really nice. thank you um i um i finished the 31 drawings of darkness in, around the october sign time it was for uh, inktober the nice. 31 drawings day um and now i'm focusing on the light ones I'm basically just gonna uh, have to like perfect them because like you know when you draw something especially like in pencil and pen you can see little details that are like flaws and stuff like mm -hmm. that i want to take that and then digitally edit them and alter them and then like make them as perfect as i want them to be and then i'm gonna release them and all that i already have like publishers nice. like that are willing to help me make the dance actual nice. Nice. So, yeah I, I just i've just never taken a, a full leap into the focus i've always just like drawn like some very good things and then just like that's nice and i just yeah. close the book and <laughs> like, move on my life so i decided to focus on that no that's nice good for you thank for you sure. thank you um so let's get back into the art gallery mm -hmm. talk so um as the curator for that event, are you putting art up with yourself or are you just like ho solely the host for those introductions? I wasn't for Cafe Maria at okay. least. Um, but then uh, Alyssa, the graphic designer for Reach Marketing, mm -hmm. um, asked me to submit for the Miracle Mile show. Okay. So I have three pieces right now that I'm showing here nice. tomorrow. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, cool. And um, so in regards to that, uh, how, do I, how do I go about this? Um... So, since we have you now on board with uh, that services, do you do you see yourself like implicating yourself into future art galleries? Do you, is this something that you're just kind of like experimenting with? Like, um, what's your guys? I've yeah. never really picked your brain on that. I just kind of <laughs> just kind of saw you hop along, be like, hey, I met that guy one day. <laughs> <I'm just> like, <laughs> yeah, right. In like those circumstances. <laughs> Shout okay. out, Biddy. <laughs> yeah, for real. Um, what was the question? Oh <laughs> um, uh, yeah, if um if your your input in the art gallery is something you see as a a long term thing, if you're experimenting, um, you're trying to testing the waters. No, there's no wrong yeah, answer. Here. I mean, yeah, I really enjoyed like the process of like talking to artists and communicating, like trying to get deadlines done and stuff. I'm glad and, you do because I'm tired of it. <laughs> yeah, no, and I also learned a lot about <laughs> these artists around here. I mean, dude, it's just we're all young and sometimes we're all like haphazard with yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, and it's also like our well, my first art show at least yeah, yeah, curating. Awesome. So mm -hmm. I didn't know like I had an idea learning process. from like my own like experience, but I didn't know what to do. Like, yeah, it's a learning process. Right, it happens with anything you first start off on. Yeah, but uh, I definitely want to like I conquer like lo the local area, like talk to as many people as possible. Yeah, networking is key, especially now that you can't see people like a bunch of people all together like, yeah. naturally. Yeah. yeah, and like we're we, like try to help out like. The local businesses that are suffering right now because Bro, of COVID. It's there like are really some. Sad. There are some local businesses that are bleeding really yeah. hard right now. We've seen so much clothes like on Bergen Line and when, stuff. When when you see when you see local business owners cry, it's just it just hits different. Like your job yeah. is not just like something you're doing for recreational purposes. Yeah, this is their whole life. Mm -hmm. like, this is what they've invested like their whole life on. Yeah. So, so yeah. So um, it, it's it feels good to like help them out. Also. It really, really does. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, uh, we're going to start coming into a, a closing for the podcast. I'm going to ask each of you a question before we go about wrapping it up. Mm. 
And this question is uh, something that basically is, it's COVID-based, it's art-based, it's mostly you-based. Um, the question is, if you had one thing that you can say that you learned from the, the shit show that 2020 was until now, like what's like the biggest lesson that you had to take that like really shows how you're moving now? Because like there's no way, there's no way. I don't care if you were blowing bubbles then and you're blowing bubbles now. There's no way that you are still moving the same way you're moving at the beginning of 2020. So is there like a lesson that you think in the back of your head that like is something that you learned is currently making you move the way you move? <laughs> okay, so um, so I'm definitely not blowing bubbles. I wasn't blowing bubbles then, but I might be blowing one or two bubbles now. But um, uh, definitely uh, keep it pushing, to be honest, because mm-hmm. life keeps moving with or without you. Yep. So, yep. so just keep moving. Yeah. Okay. How about you, Kevin? Uh, for me, I... F- I- definitely learn how to trust myself more okay yeah yeah because quarantine i definitely fell into that hole but i brought yeah. myself back up so i'm glad to hear I that i just feel like that's like a human thing also like you yeah. have the ability to bring yourself so low but you also have the ability to like yeah bring yourself. be super you know yeah like, the thing is the human mind is a very powerful thing and i feel like when people go through like their lowest moments it's like the brain not recognizing its own power and just swinging left and right yeah, yeah. it's like it's like you're like stressing so heavily so and it's because it the mind is so strong mode. yeah, yeah. So, um and if you can tap into that positively you can do so much more as well yeah. personally what i learned um because uh bro like covid hit me really fucking hard i'm an event coordinator <laughs> like <laughs> like my my job quota was i could fill the room up with as many people as you need me to and it was like wait yeah. that, we literally have to do the opposite now so um what, what my biggest lesson was um just to con- constantly adapt because eventually the more you try to adapt eventually one of those adaptations is going to move better in the circumstances you're living by um but yeah anyways um <laughs> valentine's day to february 20th yeah uh, it's gonna be on display uh valentine's day 214 until 220 so okay. i think that's uh saturday six, yeah yeah so, six so days. sunday to saturday yeah yeah fantastic and we're also having comedy comedy we have, we have sorry nights. we're having comedy on monday uh mm-hmm. so that's uh what the uh the 20 no, the 15th. 15th 15th and then we're having some small uh performances on tuesdays and wednesdays on, on the cafe of maria right. um stay tuned for that we'll release flyers later on um, besides that, do either of you guys have anything uh, in the works right now? Something coming out soon? Um, so I'm thinking about... So right now, currently, I'm working on Ashtrays, mm-hmm. which is great. They're always up for sale. You can customize them however, which way you want. I'm pretty crafty. Right, um, right. But what I'm thinking about doing next is like some really like uh, grunge... Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, oh. coffee mugs or like cups nice. and stuff like that. Like eyeballs or lips or something. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. All right, fantastic. All right, yeah. well, thank you so much for having, for having this uh, conversation with me. And uh, thanks for putting up with this whole little, you know, impromptu uh, yeah, <laughs> scenario. Um, and thanks again. Uh, say bye, guys. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. All right. Cheers.